This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We come together as the people of God on the first day of the week. To begin the week praising God for all his mighty acts of love and mercy. To begin the week setting our hearts and minds on Christ in order to live this week as his disciples. To begin this week renewing our resolve to build God's kingdom on this earth for his glory and honor. All praise the mighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open and all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is His Name is Wonderful, United Methodist Hymnal number 172. 172. That one's not in there. What? Sorry, I'm sorry, 174. Okay. 174. I can read. <laughs> His name is wonderful. Let's stand and sing. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. found on page 787 of the hymnal. Verses 5 through 8. For God alone my soul waits in silence. For my hope is from God, who alone is my rock and my salvation. My fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rest my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in God at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before God, who is a refuge for us. Our next hymn is Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, number 133. Thank you. 
picture of a page for you. Let us join in this historic confession of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Found on page 12 of the hymnal, our confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here is the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. As forgiven people, let us stand and greet each other with signs of reconciliation and peace. <laughs> that the lyrics are in English and in Spanish. We will be singing the English version. <laughs> However, well, I'm talking to, to pastors of Spanish-speaking churches, and this is a this is a favorite in the Spanish-speaking churches. So, let's stand and sing. Seek of the sea. 
says, you need to go to Nineveh. And Jonah says, well, that's a really big town. You want to send, you want to send just one me over to Nineveh? They, they were, no, 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 I ain't going to do this. So he, hits, so he gets in a boat, and he goes the opposite direction. Nineveh, Nineveh is to the east, he goes west. He goes across the Mediterranean, gets in a boat, he's going to go to Spain. All the way on the other side of the ocean. And of course God says, nope, nope, ain't going to do it. Sends a storm. Eventually, Jonah gets thrown overboard. He ends up in the belly of a whale. Three days later, he gets spit out after praying and saying, Okay, you're God. I'm going to do what you're going to do. And so God says again, once again, Okay, I want you to go to Nineveh. And this time, Jonah's like, Yes, sir. <laughs> and so he does. He goes to Nineveh. And he starts preaching. He says, You need to turn. You need to repent. The message that God says, repent, or after 40 days, Nineveh is going to be destroyed. And this is a big city. And the Bible tells us it takes three days to walk all the way across this city. It's that big. It's a huge city. It's basically where Damascus, Syria is now. And they believe it. I'm sorry, not Damascus, Mosul, Mosul, uh, Iraq. And they believe it. And they repent. And they change. They, they say, oh, Gads, if God's going to, uh, going to destroy us, maybe we need to clean up what we're doing. Maybe we need to be gay. Maybe we need to be uh, uh, the people that God calls us to be. In other words, Jonah, for all, I mean, yeah, Jonah, for all the fear that he had of going and doing what God told him to do, he was actually successful because he was doing what God called him to do. When, God, when you do what God is calling you to do, when, God, when you do what God is, is saying that uh, he wants you to do, he's also going to empower you to do it. He's going to be by your side. He's going to be backing you up. So when God tells you that you need to, to reach out to someone, to be a friend, to someone who may be lonely, to, to do the right thing, to stand up for, for, for what's right, and be honest, and uh, be truthful, and all that, God's going to be on your side. Because he called you to do that. He wants you to do that, and so he's going to help you to make sure that you're successful in what you do. So it's always good to listen to God. It's always good to follow the mission. And because it's not, it's not your success, it's God's success through you. Let us pray. Almighty God, open our ears to hear your voice. Give us the confidence to know that you are with us whenever we do your will. Amen. And so, <coughs> now you get the candy. Yeah. <laughs> I love candy. You love candy so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Call the <it> bride. No. <laughs> and some, sometimes uh, we're, we always do a silly song with the children, but sometimes we're not silly. Uh, a lot of times, when you look at the hymnal, the back of the hymnal, you'll, you'll, or you'll sing a uh, song from the hymnal, you'll say, wait a minute, I've sung this tune before to different words. Because traditionally, words and music were, the, the, the words and the, the music were written at different times, and music and words were meant to be mixed and matched. 
For example, our national anthem is to a drinking song called To Answer On In Heaven. <coughs> to Answer On In Heaven. <coughs> anyway, so what I've done, I've, I've taken the good old hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, and put it to the tune of The Rose. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. that God has entrusted to us, to the mission and ministry of this church, through our tithes and our offerings. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, giver of all good and perfect gifts, we thank you for the blessing upon blessing you lavish so generously upon us. Give us generous hearts that the resource you've given us may be used to build your kingdom upon this earth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> city of Nineveh and proclaim to you the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days that Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth and sat down to the desk. This is the proclamation he issued to Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animal or herds or flocks taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. And let everyone urgently call on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows, God may yet relent with compassion, turn from his fierce anger, so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented 
and did not bring on them destruction that he had threatened. The New Testament lesson is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked along the side of the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, his brother Andrew, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John in the boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with a hired man and followed him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now this uh, New Testament lesson starts out with John being uh, thrown into prison. Now John he's referring to is John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. And John had already had an established ministry for many years. Now John, according to Luke, John is the son of Zechariah. And Zechariah is a priest of the temple. In fact, he's, of, he's one of the higher level priests. He has the, the right to go into the Holy of Holies and minister directly before the Ark of the Covenant. Now, this is an inherited position. And so, when John was being brought up, John the Baptist was being brought up, he was trained to follow in his father's footsteps. Like I said, this, this is an inherited position that was established, was established over 1,400 years before. So, this is a family the line that's been going on for 1,400 years. And John has been was growing up, he was expected to follow in the family business, follow in the line. So that's how John was, was brought up, and that's how he was trained, probably until he was about 13 years old, when he was bar mitzvah, this is the, the 13 years old in the Jewish tradition, it's when you become a man. You're morally responsible for your own decisions. Well, at some point, John decided he wasn't going to follow the tradition. <clears throat> John decided that he was going to stay, he was still going to be a uh, religious person who's still going to be someone who, who brought the word of God, but he understood that his, call, his calling was to proclaim that the Messiah was coming. And so he went to a community called Qumran, which was an early uh, form of a, a monastery. So the monasteries grew out of the desert. Uh, Qumran is where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. John was part of that community for a while, and then uh, he, he called out the king uh, Herod. Because King Herod had married his brother's wife. And according to the Jewish law, you can marry the widow, but you can't marry the wife. And so he called out the king. Of course, now the king had to do something with him. So John went across the, the, the Jordan River. Jordan River was the border between Israel and uh, the next kingdom. It still is, by the way. It's still the border between Israel and Jordan. And so he went just on the other side, and that's where he set up his school and where he started baptizing people, and that's where he had his uh, followers, his disciples. And so John, he followed this very kind of traditional pattern of establishing a rabbinical school uh, across the River Jordan. He, of course, he had his unique message, and uh, disciples came to him. Now, eventually, the, the, by, for calling out King Herod, eventually King Herod did ha get John to be arrested and took him to prison. And as soon as John was taken to prison, that's when Jesus started his ministry in Galilee. And what we see is, is Jesus calling his first disciples. Now, this is something different. He is calling the disciples to follow him. He's going to be an itinerant uh, preacher, different from John. So John, he was the preacher and the students came to him. Jesus was going out and finding the students that he wanted to teach, that he wanted to be part of his group. He was calling his disciples. Now, there's a, there's a little bit of a difference. There's a word disciple and there's a word apostle. Disciple, anyone can be a, a disciple. If, so if you're a student of someone, if you're following someone, uh, you, you, they don't even have to know who you are. You can be a disciple by following the teachings of someone. But an apostle is someone who is sent out by the master. And you'll see that later on what Jesus does is from the, so this group of disciples that are following, this, these students that, are, that he's teaching, he chooses the 12 apostles, the 12 that he's going to send out. Now, of course, 
when you're studying under somebody, you can be very casual studying, you can be kind of a disciple, or you can be actually there in front of the master of the disciples. So there's kind of two levels of disciples. And what Jesus is doing is he's going and he's, he's picking James and, and he's picking James and John and, and Andrew and Peter. He's not picking scholars that are coming to him. He's going out and finding them. John was surrounded by theologians. He was surrounded by people who, who were really into the Torah, who were really into the writings, who really wanted to know what, what John was teaching. And so they chose to come to him and listen to him and become his disciples. Jesus was picking the common people. He was picking people from, he was picking fishermen. He, eventually he picked a tax collector. He, collect, he, he picked people who were out there in the world. Not the scholars who went to college. Not the scholars who went to John. He was picking his own people. And one of the, one of the things that he, when you do, when you do that, you're picking up people that speak the common language, who live the common experience. I was on a university campus for 27 years, and the thing about the university campus is it's kind of its own little world. It kind of has its own little community, its own little concerns. It's kind of, it's kind of as, uh, isolated. It's kind of a bastion. Uh, you don't see this so much at Trinity, which is in the middle of San Antonio, but when you go to College Station, the city is the college. I remember going to uh, 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 University of Michigan one time, had a conference at the University of Michigan, and the, the University of Michigan doesn't have one campus. It has a building here and a building here and a building here and a building here, and Ann Arbor is built around it. I mean, you, you, you might have to go, you know, for, to get from your chemistry class to your engineering class, you have to walk the ball past the Chick-fil-A and the, the Shell Station and all that because it's mixed in with the city. And, and, so, and so you get this little isolation from academia that you don't get. And that's what, what Jesus is talking. He's, he's going to, 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 to people who speak the language of the people, who are out there, who are, one, who are within the community, who have their own jobs, who have their own way of speaking, who have their own understanding. Not the elites, not the educated, not the so-called educated people. But it's going out into places, in Galilee, little towns, going to London and Junction, not New York and Chicago. You go to New York and Chicago, London comes here. We had a visitor, of course, many of you uh, met uh, the, the guy who was here from London, England, and, uh, and uh, taught, said, this is the smallest London he's ever been to. <laughs> I've been to the other London, yes. This is definitely, there's been, they're definitely different. But he's calling, he's calling people who, who from, from, from their everyday lives, from their normal lives, and say, I need you to bring a message of good news. I need you who are out there in the world. Now, it's a good thing we have scholars. It's a good thing we have theologians. It's a good thing we have people who study and really get into the Word and, and make their living and, and become lifelong pastors. But we also need the people who are just out there, who can say to their neighbor, the person that they know, in a way that they understand. Here's the good news. So Christ gave them the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, to equip people for the works of service so the body of Christ might be built up. The word of God is not confined to within these walls. God needs you to take your to take His good news of great men, of great great joy out into the world, into the workplace, into your family, into your homes, into the school, into your marketplace, into the into the store, wherever you go. He needs you to, to bear witness to the good to the good that He's done for you, to say this is what God has done for me. And listen, God is calling you, and He wants what's good for you. God is on your side. He wants you to succeed. He wants you to be successful. He, want, he gives you the, gui the guidance of, of his Torah, his loving uh, guidance, the loving word. And Torah doesn't mean law. It means teaching. It means guidance. He gives you this guidance so that you may grow, that you may be successful. So, and, 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 and he wants you to bring that to the world that says, look, if you live this way, you're going to live a better life. The way that I chose. We're not out there to fix people, but to show that God can fix them. To show them that God wants all his children 
to be forgiven. He wants all his children to know the good news that, 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 that Christ loves you. Your life has purpose. Your life has meaning. Your life ha has a design. You were created to be something for God. And, and he needs not scholars sitting in, in, in universities or, or theologians sitting in seminaries or even pastors sitting from the pulpit. He needs the people of God, you, to go out into the world to spread the good news. God loves you. So go from this place. Be God's hand and feet and voice in this world, in a world that we can all see desperately needs to hear it. Mm -hmm. Almighty God, give us courage. Give us your word. Let us be the people that you have called us to be, that we may know and love you and bring the good news to all our friends, all our family, and all who need to hear it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Our song of reflection is into my heart. It's printed. It's printed in the bulletin. A lot of good that does right now. <laughs> you may remain seated as we prepare to go before the throne of God. Into my heart. Into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. You have created the stars and the great engines of nature and the vastness of the galaxy, all things great and small. And yet, you love even us in all our messiness and all our sinfulness and all of our uh, re stubbornness and greed and, and all those things that, that corrupt our souls. You alone are holy. You alone are worthy of all praise and, and glory you alone are lo and worthy of all honor and yet we thank you for sending your son to guide us to teach us your ways to set the example of what it is to love to to, to, to be the, 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 the brother that stands beside us the friend that, that wraps his arm around us the the, the person that sits with us and then just talks with us when we, uh, when we need an ear to listen to us. And when we mess up, to dust us off, put us back on the right track, and tell us, we'll do better next time. Almighty God, tear, tear down the walls that we build, the walls that we build between us and you, the walls that we build between each other. Shine your light into the darkest corners of our soul to cleanse out those, those last vestiges a rebellion and, 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 and corruption and, and sinfulness. <laughs> Almighty God, we pray for those that are that are suffering from illness and injury. We pray for those that need your healing touch, O oh, great physician. We pray for Miss Francis. We pray for uh, your healing touch upon her. We pray for uh, 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 Jerry as he continues with, with, and we're happy to see him here today. We pray for those that are uh, suffering from confusion and need your guidance and need your clarity to need your light to shine in their lives we pray for those who spend their time and energy uh, improving the quality of human life and, 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 and serving uh, their neighbor we pray for our first responders our police our fire our, our EMS we pray for those that keep our economy and our, our, our world running the utility crews the road crews the merchants the truck drivers we pray for those that uh, need uh, are suffering from uh, uh, economic downturn. We pray for generous hearts that uh, open our hearts and our, and our resources that we may uh, help our neighbor that they be no worse than we are, or worse off than we are. We pray for our schools that are that uh, open to teach young minds and the truth. We pray for those that are on frontiers of research making uh, our human lives more comfortable and, and, uh, and prolonging uh, uh, our lives and improving the quality. 
We pray for those who uh, need you the most and those who think they need you the least. And, O oh Lord, we pray for ourselves. Let us hear your voice. Let us know your comfort. Clear away the doubt that's in our mind. That we may truly love you, may truly follow you, and see the, the glory and, and, and all the beauty and, and goodness that, uh, that you surround us with. All this we ask in your name. Amen. Is there anyone here that has a special joy or celebration or a concern they'd like the body of Christ, Christ to pray over today? The family of Jim. Jimmy Murph, and he has plenty of Almighty God, we lift up the family of Jimmy Murph. We ask for your comfort and your presence to be with them. Uh, we lift Jimmy to you and, and, and place him in your hands, the center of your own redemption, this, this sheep of your own fold. Uh, be with this family that they may know that, that your presence in this time of loss. We ask in your name. Amen. Prayers for the Dole Harris family. It was my uncle. Uh, passed away from a car wreck Friday. Almighty God, we pray for the family of Doyle Harris that, that uh, passed away in this, this, this car accident. We pray for the family and this, this sudden and unexpected loss. Be with them and offer your comfort. Lift Doyle to, to, into your hands, Almighty God. We ask in your name. Amen. I'd like to ask prayers for my granddaughter Megan. She is been released to lightly start back and she's having a lot of soreness and uh, and I can tell there's a she I, I want her fear to go away the fear that that it won't be right she's she's going through I can tell in her voice she's going through some fear yeah from the surgery Mighty God, we lift up Megan. We ask for your healing touch upon her. We ask for your presence to be with her, to give her that, 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 that peace of mind, that confidence that, that you are with her, that, uh, that uh, uh, alleviate her fears, her anxiety, uh, her worries. Uh, be with her every step of her recovery. We ask in your name. Amen. Lift up our nation. It might become a nation. I was a Mighty God, we pray for revival in our nation. We pray for uh, leaders that will uh, be compassionate and, and, and care for their, the, the people that they govern. We pray for spiritual leaders that will go out and spread your word and evangelists that will, that will turn their heart, that turn the hearts toward you, that we may truly be that one nation under God. Let us uh, see each other as, as brothers and sisters, and as you as our Father. Heal the divisions among us, we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. My cousin David's cancer is back and it spread. So um, he started chemo again and he's hurting really badly. Mighty God, we pray for David in the return, uh, the, the cancer's return. We pray for your healing touch, O great physician. Alleviate his pain, give wisdom and skill to the doctors so they determine the best uh, course of treatment to, to restore him to health. We ask in your name. Amen. Mm -hmm. We turn to the Great Thanksgiving <clears throat> on page uh, 13 of the hymnal. As we prepare to go before God's table. Oops. Don't move the car yet. Join in the Great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In the mystery of the word made flesh, you caused new light to shine into our hearts. Give us the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, blessed it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink of this, all of you. 
This is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at this heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. Grant us, gracious Lord, to partake in this holy sacrament, that we may forevermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. Uh, Jim, will you help me? I remind you, as Jim comes forward, that this is uh, not uh, the London table, this is not Memphis table, but this is God's table. And all are welcome to come and partake, partake in this holy sacrament. The smaller green cup contains grape juice, the larger gray cup contains wine. Uh, in Methodist by intention, I'll uh, take a piece of bread, give it to you, and you dip it into the chalice of your choice and partake both at the same time. Come for all things are ready. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the spiritual food which we have received through this holy mystery. Send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is I Need Thee Every Hour.
which is number 397, I hope, verses 1, 2, and 4. And stand and sing. <laughs> Up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go ahead.